Hi, welcome to our stats. I'm Jacob Sibulski. In this series of videos, I'm going to introduce you to some predictive statistical models, such as naive base and regression, with plenty of data visualization. Hi, in this lesson, you're going to learn how to use simple linear regression, how to plot linear dependencies between variables, and how to use linear models for predictions. In this particular lesson, we're going to rely on the data which has been taken from UCI University School of Information and Computer Sciences and a machine learning project. And a particular data set is called automobiles. It consists of specification of a variety of cars, it also uh, provides information about risk rating that insurance people would be involved in and also some normalized losses of one car as compared against other cars. There will be three possible variables that we could use as targets and one is price, normalized losses and symboling. Okay, let's get the data in and quickly have a look at it. You can see the variables that we loaded in. The majority here as visible are categorical. There's lots of numerical variables, which I'm going to use in this particular lesson um, because linear regression usually works with numerical variables and it is possible to convert categorical variables using dummy coding into numerical ones for that purpose, but we're going to focus exclusively on a couple of selected variables here. And you, you have noticed before, and this will confirm, that a number of those variables have missing values and A's. Unfortunately, regression does not cope well with missing values, and the first thing we're going to do is to eliminate missing values from this data set. I'm going to use for that purpose the library hmisc and impute missing values using mean or median depending on the type of variable I'm dealing with. So let's quickly do this for all variables with missing values and when we do a summary of this data frame we can see there's no longer an A's, no more missing values so we can deal with uh, building models. Uh, there are two ways of creating linear models or regression models. Uh, one is to actually build a model using um, LM function specializing in building defining linear models. Another one is to rely on plotting functions that will somewhere in the background create such models, will plot information you provided and will fit this information with appropriate model such as a line. ggplot2 library does that and the first thing we're going to do is to explore data looking for uh, dependencies between variables uh, before we actually start building useful models which could be deployed for prediction for example. And let's have the first uh, plot. As you can see I have taken the whole data frame, selected two variables, horsepower and price, from this data frame, which is x and y axis, and requested that a line is fitted to the data using the method LM, which is the linear model. It's plot plotted in red. Is it a good model? We don't know yet. Um, does it fit linear modeling uh, requirements? We don't know yet. However, the packet simply created the line and plotted it against my data. In the process, it actually used a very, very simple formula that price is a linear combination of an intercept. The line intercepts the y-axis at certain value plus horsepower coefficient. It's a number worked out by the linear model function times the value on x-axis horsepower. Um, both the intercept and the coefficient um, are 
uh, found by the linear modeling by the regression method. And the theory says that for any combination of points that we may have, there's always a line which minimizes the total error calculated, the distances of each individual point to the regression line. And there could be a variety of different metrics which uh, could be used, but the most common is to um, use the sum of squares of those distances. Okay, so we've got the plot, we've got the line. What is the issue here? The issue is that uh, the points we collected from, from the environment are not all data out there. There is a population of data and we have a sample in our hands. Worse than that, very soon if you're going to build a model, we're going to split the sample into a training set and validation set, possibly a test set. And depending how lucky we are, the training set to build the model could be appropriate for the validation and test set or not. You could use cross-validation to minimize risks of that kind. As an example, let us create a number of subsamples of the data from the cars and plot different types of regression lines against um, the data. I'm going to set the seed to 2017 so you could replicate exactly the same um, commands and the same results that I'm going to produce. The sample size from 205 observations will be 70% and I'm going to draw six times a subsamples called S1 to S6 of 144 observations randomly. So let's plot uh, six charts which could show all the information that I've just created. I'm going to use the library Grid Extra, which allows me to first prepare six plots, put them aside into variables P1 to P6, and then plot them together in one go. So I'm calling ggplot six times with more or less the same parameters as before, and now I'm plotting using Grid Arrange function, which took six of those plots, and here we are. Let's zoom on those plots to see in greater detail what we've got. We can see that um, each time uh, the collection of data drawn in samples is different. So dark dots represent uh, the data in samples S1 to S6. The gray dots in the background are dots that was not, were not used to create the linear model. They all look very, very similar. However, they're not identical. So let's put them together. Um, let's create one plot with six lines overlapping one on top of another. Um, the gray lines represent those six linear models I just developed a moment ago. And the red line represents the linear model which best fits the total number of data that I just read in. And you can see that they're not identical. They're close. They're pretty good. But that means that depending which model I'm going to develop, which subsample I'm going to take, I may have very different results. And that's something we need to live with. And that's why apart from creating a linear model, we should also validate it and find out what is the performance of that model. So I'm going to plot um, exactly the same information just for the whole data. And I also requested that the confidence interval around each of the predicted points is drawn as a gray line. Uh, what we can see, going back and forth, is that all my linear models based on 70% samples more or less fit into that confidence interval. So that's more or less we have that degree of variation that we could expect when we create a model. Now let's pick 
a different pair of variables. So let's look at normalized losses versus price. So given the price of the car, can we predict whether we're going to lose money or not? What's going to happen is that that data doesn't look linear at all. There's not the spread of points indicates there's no line to fit it well. However, the package ggplot is clever enough to allow a non-linear fitting um, of the data and use loss fitting. Um, it's approximation, it's a polynomial approximation of the data and um, it's a very different picture. It, it really shows you that the data has no linear properties. you will be curious to see what happens if we try to get the previous chart and request to show the linear model on it, the blue line, and the red, which is lowest. It shows that for the majority of the horsepower values, the model fits very well the linear model, so linear dependency between horsepower and price, but somewhere in a high price range there's non-linearity. So that's a, a good way of quickly visually assess the properties of relationships between variables. Okay, so we face the risks, we need to deal with those risks and uh, that's what we're going to do. So now we're going to actually split the data into a training a set and a validation set. The training size is 0.7, 70%. I selected a whole lot of indices that will be used for training sample and the rest is my validation sample. Now I'm going to create a model. It's very simple. We in call function LM. We specify the target variable. We specify the predictors and the data set from which those two variables are drawn. It's done. And let's look at what is the model which was produced as, as a result of calling the function. The model is basically intercept and horsepower. Interestingly, the intercept, which shows at what point on the y-axis this line intersects it, it shows that there is a negative value, which means that the cars which have the horsepower very low, not only are free, but probably the company is going to pay you to take the car with you. Of course, it's only um, the way the line was fitted um, because there was no data um, in that low range that would sway the line up in any way. Now, we could use this model for prediction. So first, I'm going to predict all values for each point which actually belong to the training set, what is the value the model predicts it should be? So at this point, which was somewhere here, um, its predicted point is somewhere on the line. So there is actually quite a difference between those. And then use exactly the same thing, but we're going to predict the values for all the points that belong to the validation sample and I'm just selecting two columns from my data frame, original data frame. Okay, let's look now at the nature of, um, of the fit. Before we looked at that when we look at the, the model fit, it was the two values, intercept and horsepower, but there is more in it. When the models developed the system also worked out the probabilities that we could trust those two values, the intercept and the horsepower coefficient. And both of those probabilities are very low, well below 0 0.001, which means there's a high degree of trust in the model. The model is pretty good according to the training set. But what happens if we try to apply that model? We predicted some values and if we we know actually what should be the results as collected from the data we know what are the predicted values if we compare the two is there a huge discrepancy between them or not it's a good question to do that I'm going to calculate three values one is the correlation between the prediction and uh, the real value the, mean, the, the root mean square between those two vectors 
and the mean um, absolute error uh, between those two. So correlation is very simple. I use function core. I pass actually the data from the training sample at this point. I calculate the square root of the mean of the uh, square of the difference and for each of the values and add it all up and then I'm going to calculate the mean of the absolute values. Now let's look at the values. Now what we see here um, we see here some interesting things. There's the system thinks that the square of correlation between those two vectors is 65%. This is actually correlation square, which is very close to the theoretical R squared value for the model. Uh, we can see 65 and 65. Well, that's pretty good, um, which means the model fitted well this. The RMSE, the root mean square, it indicates that on average um, we are about four and a half thousand dollars off each car. Um, this is the, the price of each car. The error could be uh, given in dollar terms. That's very important. And the second one is probably less um, uh, severe error is more optimistic. It says that maybe the, the error will be around three and a half thousand dollars. Let's do that for the validation set. Well, here we have a shock. Um, the validation set, when it was um, used to predict values using the model, it's only 46% um, correlated. So, which means that uh, the linear model explains um, less than 50% of all the values in the validation set. Uh, it also says that um, the error that we have for the validation set is well six and a half thousand dollars or between four and six and a half thousand dollars, which is not very good. Let's plot all of this information together um, using again ggplot with the whole host of variables. I'm going to explain what we see. What I plotted here is all the data in gray as gray points in the background. I have also produced the linear model in gray color in the background we can see here. I requested that we see only the data which belong to the training sample and nothing else. I then drew the lines between each of the points in the um, validation uh, set to the regression line in orange. Then I plotted all of the points belonging to validation samples as little orange dots and on top of that I drew in blue uh, the regression model uh, which was actually calculated using LM. Um, so that actually gives us a, a pretty good picture of um, how well the model fits the data. It shows that the data which happened to be in the validation set is quite far from, uh, from the blue line. It also shows that the theoretical line is very, very close, but that difference alone caused about 20% difference in correlation. So just because it's visually close, it doesn't mean it's actually close when you add up all of the errors. So that will be the end of simple regression. If you think it was complex enough, it was. But in the next lesson, we're going to move into multiple regression. So thank you, and I'm looking forward to see you again. Thank you.